This video is going to give you the quick rundown on how to use the Bridge Designer software. For this, you've got to log into one of the desktop computers in the lab and start typing into the search bar Bridge Designer, and you'll find it here, Bridge Designer 2016. When it opens up, you're going to see this little tip window launch, and you can read these if you like. I'm going to close it for now, and I'm going to create a new bridge design, and you should follow these steps as well. There's a little bit of setup here in the setup wizard, but it's a lot of clicking next. So we're going to take all of the default settings here. Next, are we participating in a bridge contest? No. Next, deck elevation, 24 meters. Don't change that. Don't change any of these things. Standard abutments, no pier, no cable anchorages. Uh, we're going to work with the default here, medium strength concrete and a standard 225 kilonewton truck. I'm not going to load in a truss template. And you can put your name here in the designed by bar. Next, and finally, finish. So when we open it up, it looks like this. There are four tools here, one to create joints, one to create members, one to select, and one to erase. And the first thing we need to do is to create a truss bridge. Uh, truss bridge is going to be made entirely from triangles. If you don't have a completely triangulated bridge, then um, Bridge Designer is not even going to let you test it out. So uh, we can draw a long line of members like this. And as we make members, you'll see them appear over here in the right-hand side. I'll explain that later. Uh, first, I just want to get a bridge that is testable. Now I have a bridge that should be testable. So I'm going to come up here into this ribbon here and switch from the drawing board view to the run the test load animation, the little blue button. And oh no, right away this bridge fails before the, even truck, the truck even gets to it. So I'm going to go back now to my editor and it'll show me what failed. Uh, right now I have these members failing. If I hold control I can click all of these members or I can select them from the window on the right hand side. But these need to be thicker for this to work. So I've got my little uh, buttons here to toggle the size of a member up or down. I'll take these all up one level and then try my animation again. Looking a little bit better. And failure. So now these on the outside didn't fail. I'm going to deselect these. Again, control on my keyboard and then click. And I'll increase the size of these once more. And we'll try the animation. Oh, so close. So now I just need to thicken up these two in the center. And that should do the trick. Notice as the truck drives across that the members are turning blue and red. Red indicates compression, blue indicates tension, and some members will actually do both things throughout the test. The darker the color, the closer that member is to its limit. So I have a test, I have a, a working bridge. That was, that was step two. First I needed to make one that was testable and then I needed to make it work. So this bridge is functional. Now looking up at the top of the screen, I see a little number here, a calculator uh, for the cost of my bridge. This one cost $358,835 to create. The objective now is to create the cheapest working bridge without changing any of the parameters of the of the uh, site here I want to see if I can get that number down as low as possible while still functioning so you'll notice if I make members shorter that adjusts my cost um, so longer members cost more um, also thicker members cost more and I don't want any of these to be thicker than they need to be. So if I look at my list over here, now this becomes important. There's two columns here, one for compression force and one for tension force. And I can see what's in compression and what's in tension. If it has a number, then that's, it's acting in that uh, state. So all these initial ones that I made are, are purely tension members. Uh, then I have a whole batch of compression members. And then there's some that, that maybe have both conditions in here somewhere. The number one is the hard limit. Um, anything past that and the member is going to break. So if we're already really close to one, like we are here on member 15, 
I can't make that any thinner. That's going to break if I make it thinner. But some are much further away, like uh, like this one over here. It's only 0.18. I could make that thinner and it'll still work. And my bridge is symmetrical, so I'm going to grab the other one that's on the opposite side and I can make those thinner as well. So I just sort of set a number, at like 0.7 maybe, and I'm going to select all of the members that are lower than 0.7. And I'll start here just by doing that with the tension members. Now look at the cost of my bridge, 355. If I take the, the size of these members down one click, I just knocked off about $4,000 from the cost of my bridge. Now let's see if it still works. I've got a little bit darker blue along the bottom there, but my bridge still works. So I would continue to do that and systematically take the size of the members down until they're all as small as they can be and still work. And that should take the cost down quite a bit. In the next section, I'll explain how we can take this idea a little bit further. So maybe you've taken your initial truss design to its most efficient extreme limit where all of your members are as thin as they can be and still function. Uh, and you've, you've adjusted your truss design to be the optimal arrangement and you, you can't figure out how to get any more cost saving from this truss design. I haven't quite taken mine that far, but let's pretend. There are a few other options. You can select members and you can change the material that they are made of. There's a few options here. Uh, they all come in as carbon steel, but we also have high strength, low alloy steel, and we have quenched and tempered steel. And it's also possible to change the type of stock from solid bar to hollow tube. Now, you're going to find that some of these arrangements work better for tension members, and some of them work better for compression members. And so you might do experiments where you convert all of your compression members to a different type of material. And you might find that it has a big impact on the performance. It might also have a big impact on the cost. So there's a balancing act here. You change your material types, and you might see a huge cost savings initially, but then the bridge fails terribly and then you have to beef those members back up into much larger sizes, which brings the cost up again. But when you return to the state where the bridge is working, ask yourself, is the cost lower or is it higher than where I started? And if it's higher, then you can revert your changes back to the way that they were. But uh, if it's lower, then you've made an improvement. So you can fiddle around with these different types of materials and try to get your bridge down a little cheaper. Another suggestion is to click on the calculator up here, and it will show you the cost calculations report. Now, each time you create a member, that member gets added to this cost list. Now, there's certain costs that are just built into the bridge, things that you can't really change about the bridge, like the site cost, the deck cost, the excavation cost, the abutment cost, all of that is the same for everyone's bridge. But the members themselves, and the quantity of the members that you include, these carry a cost. Now, there is a $1,000 charge per product. So if you change the size of a member, that changes it to a different type of product. If you change from solid bar to hollow tube, different type of product. If you change the material it's made of, different type of product. So we might see some members on here that have uh, many, many of a certain type of material of a certain size. You might see others that are on their own. So for example, so I've just taken one of these members and I modified its size a little bit. But now when we look at the cost calculations report, we'll see that there's just that one member, that one singular piece of this particular size and type of material. And having that one piece is costing me $1,000 just to have it. So I can save some money sometimes by actually increasing the size of a member in order to batch it together with other things that are the same exact thing and save that $1,000 cost. So in this case, I might save 1000 bucks by bumping the size of this member up to 130 by 130 and batching it together with all of these other carbon steel bars. 
So something else to think about if you have a long list of different types of products and you have some individual, individual single, singular pieces, um, you might not be able to make them smaller and your bridge still function, but you might be able to make them bigger and your bridge would still work and it would save you a little bit of cost. So that's just a little tip. So there you have it. See how cheap you can make your bridge and get it to still function. If you can make it cheaper than everyone else's in class, you could be looking at some bonus points. And there are some records to beat from prior years. So see how you do.